young things out there, I'm Carol and this is Over 50 So What? Now, strange question. Have you been laughing in the shower every morning? Previously on the show, you might recall, we spoke to the laughter lady and she recommended that we all laugh in the morning. Makes us feel better. Well, we meet Philippa again today and she's going to share with us some more tips on laughing. Now, the fitness segment. We're going to do some air guitar but so you get a chance to release your inner artist. So please join in with us. And later on, previously on the show, we covered making cards. This time, we're going to be looking at another form of creative papercraft, art journals. And now, it's time to laugh for no reason at all. <laughs> Today, the Queen of Chuckle, the laughter lady, Philippa Chalice. She's been with us before, getting us all laughing and getting us involved. She's a keynote speaker, she's an author, she's been working in the corporate area for over 30 years, and she's going to give us some more tips on how to laugh our way to better health. Hi, Philippa, welcome back to Over 50 So What? Delighted to be here. Thank you for asking me, Carol. So tell us, Philippa, what are the benefits of laughing? They're myriad. They help you in a physical, psychological or mental way. Some people even say spiritual, because when you're laughing, you're releasing the endorphins, the happy hormone, and they're just some of them. You've got others. When I'm doing one of my workshops, I go into a great depth talking about the fact, you know, there are others. And what they're doing is the stimulation of the blood flow. Well, when you're clapping hands, if you do that along enough, they tingle. So that's getting the blood started. When you're doing the laughter and you're getting that expansion in the chest, you're expanding all the time. So that's good because you're oxygenating them. And as you feel the release of the hormones, it puts you into a different state. And people who are doing a laughter session do it to their own level of comfort. We don't ask them to do it. And, and it is uh, intentional laughter as opposed to just a laugh. People will come along and say, oh, I can't do that. And I say, well, just laugh. <laughs> That's intentional laughter. <laughs> Some people call it fake laughter. But the... Sharing of the laughter stimulates you to the real thing. And the body doesn't know, this is the brilliant thing, the body doesn't know that it's fake or real. So you're getting the same benefits. And when people say that they've been involved in a laughter session, some will have sore jaws. Some will have the diaphragm feeling a bit tight because they haven't done it for a long time. Because we, we don't, as adults, laugh very much, unfortunately. And the health benefits have been now researched, been attested, and we know that people are getting the benefits in different ways. Um, one story that is often repeated is that of a, an American journalist, Norman Cousins, who wrote An Anatomy of an Illness. Now, he had ankylosing spondylitis. And what he found for himself, if he could watch some really funny movies, I mean, do you have a favourite movie that makes you laugh or a cartoon the best of all is a real old timer I love Lucy if you can get your hands on that brilliant and that's exactly what this journalist did Norman Cousins and he found that if he could have 10 minutes of hearty laughter it would give him two hours of pain-free sleep and my anecdotal evidence is from all my members that I've had come through my laughter club. That's just one club in the last years and how they feel better if they are stressed. It's a great way for reducing your stress levels. It energizes people and the body because you're moving and relax. Just so beneficial. Sounds like lots of fun to me. It is. That's the underlying thing. Letting that inner child out and having fun. That's why I do it. 
Now you've been also working in the corporate sector, you know, helping with the psychological welfare of uh, people working in businesses. Can you tell us about how you've been incorporating all this type of work into businesses? I, I'm going to take you back and I'm sure some of your viewers and listeners will recognise and remember this. And I fess to being the other side of 60, which means that as I started work out of school, which was the bank, good old ANZ bank, I can remember you sat at your desk working. You would then go to morning tea or some places they bought morning tea on a trolley even. There would be people chuckling at that one. I didn't have that. And then lunchtime, what did you do at lunchtime? You'd either go out for a walk in the fresh air, but you'd always go to the staff room to have lunch. And if people reflect back, they'll, like me, remember lots of laughter, lots of laughter. So it was a good place to work. And a place that had that laughter always had a great team. And what's happened with people working remotely is that they're not getting that interaction. There are people now who are working from home that mightn't see anybody else face to face. So what I've done is introduce it into the corporate and business sector by having regular laughter sessions. They're a great team building activity for a start. And we now know through study, things such as the cognitive powers are better, the communication channels are more open, and they all enhance and create good productivity. So I understand you have less absenteeism as well. Can I tell you about a manufacturing plant? Uh, hundreds of workers, some on the floor, some middle management, senior management. I took it to all of them. And what happened there was just so exciting in that I went there and did a laughter session with all the different tiers. And they then had it come together, people who wanted to, and they did. And their news was that instead of having this high absenteeism, we showed by having a laughter session more regularly, there'd be lower absenteeism. And they went. 113 days without anyone being absent, which was a record. Wow. That is amazing. One in particular was an international hotel chain. And this is the story I'm very proud of. Now, what happened is that they then had regular coming together of the laughter session. And what happened there is they became a more cohesive group, worked in together. And I'm thrilled to say that they achieved the occupancy under target time. And instead of the goal of 80, they're up to 91%, which was unheard of. And they attributed to the laughter. So that's the power of laughter in a corporate setting. Wow, that's amazing. Now, for people watching today, what are your top three tips for putting more laughter in your day? Get up each day and start with the laughter. Put yourself in a position, if you're confined and you can't get out, pick up the phone and talk to people. So you're communicating and laugh. I have a couple of friends who will ring through and Carol, they'll open with the news or the joke, et cetera, and say something that will make me laugh. So they think, because I'm the laughter lady, that I'm an easy target. But that's the benefit of it. Being around children, and I'm thrilled to see where there are aged care facilities They've got programs with children, preschoolers are being brought in to meet with them. And there's lots more laughter because they are a great thing. Pets. And also being strong. Turn off things that aren't going to be good. Don't watch a scary movie. Well, that's some fantastic tips. Thanks so much for your time today. Really appreciate you coming on the show. And I suppose we should laugh our way out. I live life laughing. <laughs> Thanks, Philippa. Thanks for watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50. So what? <laughs>